all belongs to you, O Lord. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Elizabeth Ann Ministries. I trust that all is well with you. I want to welcome those who are stopping by for the first time and welcome my faithful followers and supporters who continue to support, pray, and encourage me as well. Glory be to God. I'm Elizabeth Ann, and welcome to this week's session. We took a break last week. Um, I thank God for that. But we're back this week, and we want to encourage you to grow even further. You know, there are various levels of Christianity and various levels of our faith in Christ, but it's all salvation in the name of Jesus. And so we want to make sure we're laying a good foundation for those persons who do not know much of the word of God and who wants to be encouraged and inspired to learn. And we want to pray that God gives us more passion to run after him and form that personal relationship so that we can be accountable when he comes to us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Glory be to God. This week, as I was praying, um, the Lord said to me, it's time to prioritize God. And he further went on and say, encourage them to lean on me and pray for those that are broken. And so I want to stop right here and let you know that God has called me and equipped me to do such a thing. As an intercessor um, and a prayer warrior, we pick up God's concern and his heart and the burden that he wants to give unto us so that we can feel that burden, what others are going through in our hearts. And we begin to cry unto him for those persons as we intercede. And so it's just like Jesus when he came on the earth and he was moved by our infirmities and touched by it. And he went through what we went through. And that's good when you want to be an effective prayer warrior and intercede and standing in the gap for others. And this week, the Lord said, the burden is really heavy. It's really heavy. But God says to tell the people, I am their refuge. I am a refuge for the people. God says to tell you he reigns on the just and the unjust. So he's not just calling those who are unsaved, but he's calling those who are saved and are going through a troubled time, a rough time. Those who are going through sadness, a broken heart, having trouble, going through pain and sickness. You're in grief because of loss of a loved one. Um... You're in argument or divisiveness with someone else, mixed miscommunication, misunderstood. God says a troubled marriage, rejection, abuse. You're lonely, so there's loneliness, separation, divorce. You're feeling hopeless, feeling cast out. You're feeling crushed. You're run over. You're feeling defenseless. You're entrapped. You're feeling deceived. My God, you're feeling abandoned today. Glory be to God. The word of God is telling us to come unto me, said the Lord. All of you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Glory to God. God is concerned about his people always. But they are those who are going through some difficult situations at this season and time. And so we want to read Psalm 46 unto you because the Lord our God is our salvation. Okay? Verse 1 begins like this. God is our refuge and strength and mighty and impenetrable, a very present help, well-proven help, in the time of trouble, my God. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and, 
And though the mountains be shaken and slip into the heart of the seas, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its roaring, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High, and God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved, said the Lord. That's his bride, the body of Christ those persons on the earth God will help her when the morning dawns God is with us he is a refuge he's our strong tower that's what he's saying to you today you know a refuge is um, a condition of being safe or sheltered from a pursuit or pursuit danger or trouble it's a safe haven, port in storm. It's a sanctuary and a shelter. Protection and safety with security. It's a hiding place. A safe harbor. It's an ark like Noah's ark in the midst of the flood. For those who is on the earth, in that time my god safety the lord says he's calling us unto safety you know weeping may endure for a night that's in psalms 30 verse 5 and your night could be a week one night a year and years months for joy comes in the morning, said the Lord. It will not always feel that way. It will not always be that way. But God is saying, I hear your cry. I'm attending to your prayer. Being broken and having been fractured is sad. That's what brokenness means. You're damaged. You feel damaged. You're no longer in one piece. Everything is coming apart in your world, in your life, in your situation. My God, um, you feel overwhelmed, ruined. You feel doomed. You've fallen down and so many things coming at you and you feel lost in so many ways and you feel like giving up and all hope is lost. You feel so much despair. You're feeling crushed, beaten and overpowered. That's what brokenness does to us. Oh, my God. I tell you, a broken heart is not good. It's a painful thing. But God says a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise nor cast out. So when you're overwhelmed and feeling defeated completely, it is God who will come to your rescue. This when you've given so much of yourself to something or someone I mean, sometimes a job can be overwhelming when you give too much of yourself to them and they're demanding so much of you because you've given them that mindset to think so. You've allowed it to happen. Sometimes relationships, they become like a crushed weight upon you sometimes. Communication is down. It's misunderstood. It's out the door sometimes between people. Lack of understanding can cause friction between family members. Oh, my God. I tell you, there's so much that goes along with this word broken. But God says to us in Romans 12, 15, that we are to rejoice with those who rejoice, sharing in others' joys. But we are to weep with those who weep sharing an other's grief and during this time as we go through the brokenness god says that we are to be steadfast and patient in distress devoted to prayer continually seeking wisdom guidance and strength during this time of our broken situation i want to remind you as well that there's still a broken situation in Ukraine and Russia. That is so sad. 
Let's lift up those who are broken this week. Let's encourage those who are broken this week. Let's intercede for those and stand in the gap. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to testify of a time when I was broken. And this was a year my son, my youngest son and I, um, was going on a vacation trip. And we had planned it um, a month in advance. I had paid for the hotel a week in advance and um, rented a car. And we said we would drive up to my daughter who was living in Virginia at the time from Fort Lauderdale. And so we wanted the scenic route and we said we stop in Tampa for four days and then we'll continue on two weeks into Virginia just to spend some time with um, her family and enjoy the state. And, you know, we went, we checked into the hotel and it wasn't what we saw on the picture. My God. We walked into the room and we said, my God, what is this? It was a filthy room, filthy. We were very disturbed and I had already paid for the whole week. And then we looked across at the other side of the street and it was like we were in the section that was just sad. And on the other side of the street was this beautiful, nice, clean hotel looking at us right across um close to bush gardens and we said oh my god we felt like we were duped in fact we were we were deceived and i said god we prayed i said god show me what to do this was a time when um i had had a personal situation um with my spouse and there was so much misunderstanding the trip that we had planned i had planned with my son and you know um we were not on even keel and so i was feeling broken my heart was broken and in the midst of all of that crying unto god i felt the lord's hand reach down and touch my heart because with the hotel and things were not going correct and, and miscommunication and there was no peace within, I cried unto the Lord and the hotel just made it worse. So I broke down. My son and I prayed and I said, I'm going back to get my money and I'm going to believe God um, to fix us up with another hotel. And I went down to the lobby and you know, when I got to the counter, the lady said, miss, you're not pleased. Say, I said, no, I'm not. And I broke down. And she said, well, um, the money is already on the, the credit card. And we couldn't take it off right away. So you would have to probably go and um, charge another night. And we would try to see what we can do um, during the stay, the time that I was there if I wanted to look for another hotel. And I said, you know what? I just need you to reverse the charges um, and I will wait because there was a, a time to wait on the funds to be cleared and I would just charge whatever I had on, another, on, on my card. And so my son and I came out and we packed our things and um, the lady apologized and we went to the next hotel across the road Listen to me. When I got into the lobby and the person saw um, us with the bags coming from the direction of the hotel across the road, the manager said, oh my. And I let the tears flow. I broke down. I was just broken. I cried. I broke down. Yes, grown woman crying, hurt, just disappointed and everything else going on. You got everything going through your mind. And she said, don't worry. They just got me a room. They said, don't worry about it. We'll give you the night free. We will give you a nice room. Relax, catch yourself. We'll come back and work out all the details. The favor of God. 
So my son and I went into the room and we got settled and I was comforted and we went out and got something to eat and we came back. And when we came back in the room, we started to watch the news. And as we watched the news <clears throat> in that city at that time, we were in Tampa, there was a, a student that had been kidnapped. And um, we prayed. I said, oh my, that's a sad situation. We tucked ourselves in for the night and early the next morning, around 6.30 or so, we heard all of the sirens, all of the alarms. We heard the, um, the bullhorn with the policemen usually have making noise across the road. Guess where? From the hotel we had checked out of. <laughs> there were policemen when we opened our window and saw policemen that had surrounded the hotel. The person whom we had witnessed on the news that had been kidnapped was being held in the same hotel we had left and was disappointed in. My God. God had moved us out of the scene and the chaos to protect us. Someone had gotten hurt in the process of the policeman finding, discovering that the person, the student had been held in that hotel. And God had rescued us out of that situation and put us in the calm side of the street. My God, what an on time God. When I sat down and I, I wondered and pondered and said, my God, evaluated and looked over everything. I said, my God, you are so awesome. He had rescued me. He had comforted me. My God, he saw and had seen what would have happened before. I probably could not have taken that situation if I was over there still in that hotel that was just so disgusting. My God, I gave God praise. I blessed him. And on top of that, my husband had called and we had um, made peace and I was feeling better. God had taken care of the distraught, the miscommunication. He had dealt with my broken heart and all the stress that I was going through, um, the disappointment and everything else that came to take my peace away from me. The next day was a brand new day for me. This is the same God that will do the same for you. And so I want to encourage someone. I want to let you know, First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Yes, we can confide in others. And of course, if you're a member of a church, you would go to someone, a pastor or someone there, a prayer partner, or someone who can minister to you if you're looking for a refuge and you're looking for someone to carry the burden or whatever pain you're going through, through your brokenness. But God is our refuge and strength. The word of God says a very present help in the time of trouble. So let's pray all of that all for you. We bind all of that all for you in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of brokenness off of you, of grief, of sadness, of turmoil, of hurt, of disappointment. We come against the spirit of hopelessness and feeling cast out and feeling crushed and feeling defenseless. Fenceless. We come against that spirit of you feeling abused and um, overlooked and rejected. My God, in every situation, the spirit of heaviness, we bind you in the name of Jesus and we rebuke you in Jesus' name and we call for the spirit of peace and comfort. The Lord has given us the Holy Spirit who comes to comfort us. And so he has not left us comfortless. The word of God says, for the spirit of heaviness in Isaiah 61, 3, we ought to put on the garment of praise. Hallelujah. And so God has left us with tools. And as we pray, Father God, we commit our way unto you and we ask you to come in. As we cry unto you, Lord God, 
We know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And we pray for those who've lost loved ones, Father God, who are in serious grief. Father God, we pray for them, Lord God. Precious are the saints that die in the Lord. But we pray for those, Father God, who need extra care, extra comfort, Lord God, who needs the joy of the Lord to strengthen them today. We pray, Father God, your word says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard according to Isaiah 59, 19. A wall of protection, Lord God, that the wind of God will produce to encamp around, Lord God. We ask you to cover your people, Lord, as you reign on the just and the unjust today. We pray for those that are hearing this now and you will hear it in the future and whenever they are listening, God, that the anointing of God will come forward and heal men, deliver and set them free from the pains of torment and brokenness today. And we thank you, Father God, that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish where it is sent. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, Thank you, Lord, that thou hearest us. Thank you, Father God, that in a time of trouble we can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved and be set free. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And we thank you, Father God. We magnify your holy name. We worship you today. And we thank you, Lord. May you continue to empower your people to be overcomers, to go forward in your name. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. I pray that you were encouraged today, that you were ministered to in some way. May God continue to bless you throughout the rest of this week in Jesus' name. Until the next time, God bless.